the end of the world as we read it, and I'm feeling fine, because boy do I love to read an apocalyptic book. And so today, I am so glad that you are here to join me as I give you my top five favorite apocalypse books. My first pick has to be none other than Stephen King's The Stand. If you are unfamiliar, this is the story of an illness that the folks have termed captain's trips that makes you very, very sick. It is highly, highly contagious. And while it moves fast and kills fast, people are still spreading it to each other. And it wipes out something like 85% of the population. And so the bulk of the book is what happens next. It's brilliant. So it follows multiple POVs before it was really popular to have multiple POVs in your books. So we've got all of these different characters who are all facing their own trauma over what had happened and they're starting to kind of get together and find each other and team up. There are two kind of big forces in at least the United States. One of them is the walking dude who is kind of calling people to him and one of them is mother abigail who is calling people to her not literally it's a dream thing i'm i'm tr it's hard not to give spoilers for this one so i'm going to stop but it is so good it is so immersive it's going to take some time to read because of length and to follow all of the characters but it is so worth it especially if you like that apocalypse vibe it's so much fun and I still, it's been a long time since the last time I read it because my book has been missing for a long time. And I still think about the characters even years after the last time I read it. So if you haven't, go pick it up. I believe there's like a special edition at Barnes and Noble. I'm not sure if it is the unabridged version. This is the, the instance that I know of that a Stephen King book is better without having it been edited. The unabridged version where it's like, his director's cut, but in a book form, is a stronger book and the parts that had been cut really did add to the story. So if you haven't read it and you like the world ending, give this one a shot. My next pick is a lot lighter, I would say, than The Stand. It is Emily St. John Mandel's Station Eleven. And this is such a great book. It is super short, so it's nowhere near the reading time investment that The Stand is, but it also looks at things differently. So it's kind of the world has ended, most people are gone, there are still some folks around. And so this takes place for the most part, we do get flashbacks, but it's about 20 years after the incident happens. And our main characters are part of a traveling troupe of actors and musicians who go around to different places that have become settlements and do Shakespeare plays and play music for people as a bit of a reminder of the old world and and a way to kind of mentally escape kind of the rebuilding of everything that's going on. And it's just lovely. Of course, hijinks ensue and things happen to them and there's bad stuff, there's bad guys and bad stuff. I don't want you to think that this is just a hug book because it's not. There, there are things that they have to deal with, but for the most part, it does have a bit of that hug book quality. It does have characters that you just want to be besties with. And so I loved this. I have yet to watch the series. So that's going to be on my list. Maybe it'll be like a fun holiday thing that I'll do when I'm not watching strictly holiday movies. And now for the opposite of Station Eleven, and it is Cormac McCarthy's The Road. This is probably the most depressing book that I have ever read. So I believe what happens that causes things here are, is bombs. I think it's nuclear bombs, maybe, but people are still kind of out, so maybe it's something different. But whatever it is that happened, it doesn't just kill most of the people, it also kills the earth, it kills the soil. So yes, there are people left, 
but they can't restart anything because nothing's grow. They can't grow new food. The animals are all gone. So the people that are left are basically fighting for survival, finding whatever food was already processed and made before the event happened, which means that as time goes on, that gets more and more scarce. Things get more and more desperate and dangerous. And so this is the story of a man and his son as they're trying to travel together and stay safe and stay alive. It's so heartbreaking. It's so sad. If you like your apocalypse to come with tears, this is the book for you. My next pick is fantasy but it's still kind of apocalyptic and it is the fifth season by N.K. Jemisin. It has been since well before COVID since I read this and so I don't know a lot of specifics. I'm instead of trying to figure out the words to put together what I do remember, I'm just going to read you the back. Okay. This is the way the world ends for the last time. It starts with the great red rift across the heart of the world's sole continent, spewing ash that blots out the sun. It starts with death, with a murdered son and a missing daughter. It starts with betrayal and long dormant wounds rising up to fester. This is the stillness, a land familiar with catastrophe, where the power of the earth is wielded as a weapon and where there is no mercy. So yeah, it is so good. I know I am not able to remember as much as I would like to. That is why this is on my list of things that I want to reread, hopefully in 2024, if not earlier, this might actually end up on November's TBR. I would love to also read the rest of the series because I read the one and stopped but I know that I loved it. So it is multiple POVs. We have a character who is trying to find her child. Her husband had killed her other child and had taken off with one of them. We've got a whole lot of like machinations and people trying to use what's happening to the world and kind of the apocalypse they're in the middle of to their own betterment, I guess is the best word for it. I kind of remember all of those things, but I don't remember the little details and things. And I don't feel confident going forward to the next one without a reread, but I'm really excited to get to it because this is such a good book. The next apocalypse book is a sci-fi and it is a chunker, check that. And it is Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. That is my best guess. So this is a space book. What has happened is the apocalypse has happened. Earth is now uninhabitable. People saw it coming, not super long term, but long term enough that they were able to put together ships and they were able to create some science things to be able to terraform planets so that they can make them inhabitable for human beings. So obviously not every human was able to get on these ships, but, but small crews of humans were able to get on these ships and they're going out and looking for new homes, places where they're able to change the planets so that people can live there and continue the human species. So what happens in this one, it happens kind of, even though it's really long, it's still a little bit early, so I feel okay sharing. They find a planet that they're pretty sure is gonna work, that their science will work, but there are folks on the ship who don't think that the science that they want to do is right, who don't think it's a good thing to do. And so they sabotage it. The science does go wrong, but not in a way that anybody would have guessed. And so this almost whole book is what happens to the planet and things that were already living there because of what happened in space with the ship of humans. So I think that was not spoilery and I hope it sounded intriguing. So if you have time to get into a sci-fi chunker and that sounds like it's your thing, so, so, so suggest you go here. It's wonderful. And you don't have to feel like, oh great, I have to do three books that length, because you don't. While I can see how it would move forward, I don't need that right now for this to feel complete. So this can be the thing, and then later I can go to the next thing, or you could go to the next thing, and we're all good. So yay, apocalypse! 
I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed all of these books. I really hope if horror for an October isn't quite your bag, that maybe the end of the world in its different machinations be fantasy or sci-fi or or heartbreaking literary fiction or what have you, whatever it is that you can enjoy one of these books. And so in the meantime, I really hope that you have a wonderful rest of your week and I hope that you get to read some really great books even if the world ends in them. Bye.